Okie dokie. How's audio working? Am I too quiet or do I need to bring up the volume on that some more? Okay, good. Audio's working. Uh, let's check the levels. Yeah, auto game control. Oh, I just need to boost. Oh, coming out 25 ish. There we go. How's that? Bit quiet. Okay, I'll bring it up. How's that? Better? Okie dokie. Want to make sure my audio wasn't too low. Aha. So this is the teardown target today. Uh, very early model, what it looks like to be a quadrant detector seeker. Buzzing in the background? Hold on a sec. Let me go check. Start check. Looks like we are holding, but I am going to uh, check one more thing. So, checked it out. Looks like we've got everything go now. Antenna is in a much better position. We're sending solid at 2.2 megabits per second. We should be a-okay. <sighs> I have no idea how many viewers we have. And I don't really care that much. Anyway, hello, welcome to uh, the lab, as usual. 
Welcome to the lab. Today we're tearing down a Sidewinder Seeker. It's going to be an interesting one because uh, this one's a slightly different variation from the typical uh, spin ones in that this does not spin but still has your range of motions. Uh, it's a quadrant photo dad based semi active laser seeker based upon uh, what I've ex uh, visited on the back. You've got your quadrants A, B, C, D, which is typical numbering schemes. So let's get into this thing and start it off. Uh, no, this is not a C variant. This was, an, uh, as far as I could tell, an experimental uh, stack. Mainly because the way it's labeled on the back. Bigger question is, are we going to have electronics in here with the custom silicon, or is it just going to be standard uh, non-custom, which would be really interesting. So first thing I'm going to do is remove this glass retainer ring, because the glass is shattered, as you can see. Too small. Next one up. Uh, I have no idea if it was flown, or even tested that much. Mainly because, well, I got it from a junk dealer, essentially. Yeah, if it was flown, it would have been in much rougher shape on impact. It looks like we have three screws holding in this piece. I think this was a bench test unit or like a hardware in the loop test unit. Alright, so this should release. Yep, there it goes. So that's usually your seeker dome mount solution. In this case, there's no dome. So I'm going to put that off to the side. So now that that sharp ass glass is out of the way, I'm going to look at this and figure out how we're going to approach it next. I think the next thing I'm going to do is remove the upper light shroud. Brad, this is the seeker head. Those screws do not have serial numbers. Okay, so let's not use that one. Let's try a little bit bigger. Okay, does not want to move. Okay, there we go, we have one that's moving. There goes another one. No, we're not breaking the skateboard in half because uh, this is supposed to break uh, your ground vehicles in half. Right, will it release? Or do I have to do additional unscrewing? Looks like that's not going to come up yet. That's okay. So, we might as well attack the rear. Uh, I don't think these are ITAR screws, considering how old this is. As best I can tell, it's from uh, maybe the 60s or 70s. So let's have a look inside this electronics block. Please have some electronical goodies inside. We can bring this down so you get a better view. In before spider? I don't know, maybe. We'll see. Two more screws to go. Anthrax? <laughs> Who 
who the hell would have put anthrax in here? Okay, so we got no spiders or anthrax, best I can tell. It looks like, yeah, each of the quadrants is going straight to one of these SM, well, those aren't SMA. Not 100% sure what these things. Hybrid electronics is uh, partially solid state, partially vacuum. So we've got a lot of 30 gauge wire in here some uh, very corroded and poorly soldered joints. I don't know if you could see the corrosion here, but it's kind of unhappy looking with how green it is, which is slightly odd considering about uh, where this came from. So it looks like that's your ground bonds going to here, which ties it to the ground of the case. What this socket goes to, I'm not 100% sure. But there are Erie 47 mic 50 volt capacitors there. And it looks like you've got a diode down here or maybe another capacitor. There is wire wrapping bond wires up here tying the capacitor into the loop, which then comes down to the ground. And then this one here looks like orange. So orange comes here loops back up around switches to red and then red comes out here and goes into the seeker I believe there is bias electronics possibly in the seeker so this window here is not actually your seeker window that's a coaxial laser beam here I'll go get a laser pointer and show you what I mean gotta grab one from the stack So if we shine the laser pointer through here, ooh, yeah, you can see it coming out there. I, this is for target detection, which is coming out of uh, this beam aperture here. See? It's got a folded mirror system which allows it to transfer the light up the path through it. So, let's get this rear cover off then. I'm not sure where these go, which will be interesting to track it down. Hold on a sec. And back. Had to go bounce the link over. Okay, so speaking of the quadrant detector, this is one of my samples of a quadrant detector. You've got four photodiodes here, which are labeled like this. This is going to be basically munitions dev 101 class with me not a very good teacher just janking it there it is yes it's uh, most likely passed is just raw analog we're gonna see if it's got amplifiers internally so let's say you've got your seeker quadrant like this so it's split into four pieces you've got a B C and D 
although normally it's like this. So you've got your vertical and your horizontal. So you've got your y, x. Or no, these are reversed. So that's negative x, this is plus x. And it goes usually a, b, c, and d. Even using this, you run some math, which can be done with this one or this one, which is usually you get x by doing and y by doing signal on a plus signal d minus signal b plus signal c over signal a plus b plus c plus d. And then for your y, you go signal a plus signal d minus signal c plus d. And it's over a plus b plus c plus d. You can do this digitally or in analog. I've seen it done both ways, but it's pretty interesting stuff how you're able to get target resolution out of this. Oh, hey, Nathan. But yeah, that's essentially how this is working on a fundamental level internally to the seeker. But anyway, let's get this recover off. So I need to unscrew this bake light block. Nope, too big. Let's try this one. Nope. This one? Nope. Definitely not. Uh, let's try this one. Nope. OK, I guess we're going to this slide deck. Uh, you. Too small by just a smidge. No, they're not the same equation. They're slightly different. All right, screw that. Unscrew this. Careful not to destroy anything, because I need to get this screw. No, Adafruit will probably not watch this. Oh, damn, why the hell is this really cranked down? Oh boy, this could be difficult. Please do not be a pain. How the hell? Hmm. Hmm. Damn, that's really torqued down. Uh, might need to go grab a heavier duty screwdriver. Get the hell over it. Uh, there it is. And now we need a torque bar. This will probably work. Ooh, no, that slipped. I don't like that. We'll go for Damn, this thing does not want to move. Hmm. Well, this isn't good. No, I know I'm weak sauce, but 
I think it's just you, Nathan. All right, I'm gonna go get the drill and gently torque this up. He is uh, getting a solid 2.2 uh, megabits per second. It should be fine. Uh oh. Output. We'll drop this down to two. Zero. 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 Quiet. All right. Harry can't read my handwriting. Okay. That's not that surprising. Okay. Max torque, these bolts are not moving. Hmm. You haven't missed much, Dr. B. to hell they didn't just like my frame rate is 30 frames per second and I'm streaming at 720p maximum yes that was the drill it's not a hammer let's go for a bigger version of this drill bit come on please come unstuck Could try left hand thread. Nope, no budge. No, I'm maxing out the torque of this drill. Hmm. And I also have no idea how the hell this is attached. Because solid. Oh no, it's attached via these. So we could just unscrew this and just see how far we can get into this thing. No, I'm not using a hammer drill because this has got uh, optical elements in it and I'd really rather not trash those things. Impact driver? Uh, I might do some gentle impact in a bit, but I'd really rather like to minimize that. Keep the screws. Uh, I've got a soldering iron right here. So we can use that. Oh, Carmelec. These are, this is not the uh, same ones that need cooling. I could use the torch. Uh, these ones are the laser variant, which does not need the nitrogen argon bottle or flow past it. Okay, yeah, that is mounted this way. So we can move this to the side. We can try on. Okay, I'm just gonna remove all four of these floating bolts. Side there. You can really see how uh, hand built this thing is. With like the definition of that. Ooh, wait, I thought I saw the red locker on it. did not. And I need this driver. Uh, I did not get the 9x uh, handbook yet. I'm still waiting on the FOIA requests. Alright, I'm going to pull this out of frame so I actually have better torque angle.
things you really don't want to move. We might be stuck. Oh, I could try cooling it. I want to go get some uh, cryo spray. And by cryo spray, I mean an inverted air duster. We'll try one of these inverted freeze out. Turning it harder is not a great idea because I don't want to strip these out. Man, that thing is uh, not cooling down. The hell? What the hell is all that build up? That is not the the hell? Where's a lab rag? Don't know what that schmoo is. I do not like that. I'm gonna find a lab rag. That could just be like way too much bitterant in this canister, which would be kind of sucky. Found a roll of paper towels. Uh, no, this is classic Phillips. Posi drive looks like it's a twisted Phillips. No idea what the hell that is. So I'm just gonna go grab another canister. There's definitely extra schmoo in that, and I don't like it. Try another canister. Yeah, I don't think they were gonna use Wera and laser etch contact edging on this. So let's try this. The hell is that schmoo? I'm so confused. Whatever it is evaporates as well. So, well, we fr partially froze that, so let's see if it moves. Nope. Not even a slight bit. Should we try heating it? I don't know for a fact it probably move these ones a little. That's not good. Well, at least these upper ends are over here. So I guess we'll just free this. Because it looks like they were soldered anyway. And then they reinforced over the solder joints with that schmoo. 
Well, that's not optimal. Keep the screw. Well, these are in giant pieces of metal, so I don't know how well that's going to work. So we'll just keep the soldering station on. I have no idea why they over torque these, but we're going to try to unstick them. In theory, yeah, but we'll see in a bit. Temperature. Uh, we'll use this screw. So now we just hold it here and heat this thing. Damn, if I had another HDMI capture card, I could, or my UVC adapter, we could actually see this heating up with the flares. Because when you have too many of them, like I do, you use them for all sorts of fun stuff. Come on, please work. I'm just gonna get this held in place by tension there, and I'm gonna go get a flare. Butane torch? Yes, but it's very, very aggressive, and I'd really rather not make it aggressive AF. I need from the junction box my thermal output adapter set, which is somewhere. So temperature is slowly coming up on that. Thermal contact there isn't the best. And I'm running kind of low in this one. It's battery. So i got to find the adapters. Where the hell did you go? Are they still attached to the other end of the thingamajig? Nope. They're somewhere around here. Quick heat and less heat soaking. Well, this thing's been warming up for a fair bit of time. So we can probably try, I'm gonna bump this up to 380. Oh god, please don't be red Loctite. No, this is, uh, I think, 400C? I mean, yeah, but this one looks like a prototype, so I'm surprised that they're probably using complete lockdown. Especially considering this is just a rear retention flange.
but uh, I've never built a missile, so who am I to know? I'm just coming at this as a complete noob. Places, Nathan. Places. I have my sources. Break down Loctite if it's Loctite. And then I'll probably T shock back. Please come apart. Alright, let's try it. Try left hand turn first. Nope. Right hand. Ooh. I can't even. This is too well heat sunk. I can just. Yes, the military uses a lot of Loctite. How the hell am I going to get this thing apart? Especially because it looks like somebody already tried to get into this thing once. Hmm. Hmm. I could go get the torch. Weld on a bit and a cheater bar. I mean, it looks like these are steel, so I guess I could weld. And then this is aluminum, so it wouldn't stick if my younger brother used his. Wait a minute. It looks like they're using threaded inserts. Hmm. And it looks like you can't get at it from this angle. Come on. Yeah, it looks like this is just a piece of lead sheet. Yeah. This looks like a piece of lead sheet here at the front. Because it's soft, malleable like that. Could also be functioning as a counterweight. No, this looks like metal tape. Metal tape wrapped around it. Maybe even, no, this looks like aluminum tape if I had to be honest. Because it looks like that same goop that got me real good when I was doing the rework of that FPGA. Lifter torque. Oop, yep, there we go. There we go. We've got spacer and the upper mirror. And that allows us to see the infrared filter. And it looks like this got dinged and snarled down. So it looks like it wasn't supposed to be bent quite like that. Maybe it was. No, that doesn't look like just a bend. No, wait, I see cracking lines on that. So yeah, that is a little bent. So you can see an infrared bandpass filter here. 
That doesn't rotate. So that's a convex mirror. So it's primary light hits it and bounces inwards. Hmm. So put that over there. And I'm gonna get a Q tip. I need a canister isopropyl. So well I continue to think about how the hell I'm gonna get the rear plate off. So the rear plate is where all the real fun is. So clean that off. I'll clean this off too while I'm already. Ah, uh, that's much better. I can actually see reflections in it again. How much grime is on this thing? There we go. Much, much shinier. Oh yeah, it's a good convex. Uh, I'm not sure how much of a hemisphere that is. But now it's much cleaner. And soon, throw that away. Grab another one. So will be the input filter. My end goal with this is to make a bench top demo unit. Gently dry it off. Damn, I wish I had my NIR cameras. Then I can actually look down that. As for how the hell I'm going to get that off, I'm not 100% sure. Maybe that way? Because it looks like it could be glued. But I'm not sure, and I don't want to crack that filter. Hmm. Oh yeah, if, you, if I look at my fingers, I can see his projected image. Hang on a sec, will it work if I project, I grab a small cut out of this and put it here. Yeah, look, you can kind of see the bright spots of Remember, this will be bounced and focused inwards into that blind spot. Uh, my high quantum efficiency NIR ones, I also have NIR pass filters over in my optics box, but I don't think those ones are. The problem is all of my cameras in here have the uh, IR cut filters on them. How can I get inside this thing? Well, I'm gonna grab a scalpel and start cutting away at this elastic schmoo. Let's go de schmoo it. This is an ambient or internal light filter method. I've seen it used in spectrometers before because like my bench spectrometer has a black silastic optical bench around all the seams. The mechanism for uh, the gimbal is intact as far as I can tell, which is how it's able to move so freely. And also the caging coils are not ener energized, which is good. 
but this also might not even use Cajun coils. It might constantly be in a search pattern. Drill the screws out. I might. I might. Okay. Okay, all of these wires from this bundle are freed. Which goes, who the hell knows? So let's try removing this one that has the optical chunk in it. Will it use the same type of screw? No, it's a slightly larger bit. Okay. Is it you? No. So it's my number six, I believe. Yes. So that goes back over there. Much harder to get the shaft out. Yeah. But that's just part of life, I guess. Interesting how one of these is a mismatch screw, which lends even more credence to what I think it is that this is a prototype. Here, I'll change angle so you can see better. Hmm, those are really different lengths. So I'll put that screwdriver set over there. And then this one goes over here. So I keep my screw tray here, mostly. Weld a bolt. Yeah, I'd really rather not drill at this thing because I wanted a full non-destructive teardown. So silver on the right side. Looks like for a shorter screw. Okay. Let me make note of that. Okay. Screws are standard. I'm betting they are. But then again, remember, military prototype. Who knows how much of this is bespoke custom? Ooh. Yes. That's very good. Uh, let's go here. So I'll grab you. Gently pry underneath. Come on, silicone. Okay, yeah, silicone's starting to let go. So walk the knife around. Gently, but not too deeply cutting. Pry upwards and away. All right. We now have a larger access port and the glass filter away. Oh yeah, you can really see the pocket down there and the laser path. It looks like the laser path has a filter that has a band stop or pass reflection coating on it that appears bluish. And you can really see the dividing line of the rear plate. I'm gonna, ooh, metalloid foil. Interesting. Oh, there's met, there was metalloid foil in that to facilitate better reflection? No, that's just weird. Could be for grounding purposes. But I'm gonna cut away the silicone. Get rid of this silastic. It's a pain in the ass. Hmm. 
I wonder what these screws do. same size so let's unscrew these maybe these are retention arm for something so I'm gonna only unscrew three of them and gently start unscrewing the last one see if it causes anything to move internally I don't feel anything moving internally yet And then I'll probably grab a razor blade and gently scrape the surface to get rid of the rest of this silastic. Interesting that these threaded inserts here the same depth it looks like, but they use two different sizes of screws that were removed. I wonder if that's because they just ran out, or if there's a more specific reason. I'm betting it's just because they ran out. Lending even more credence to the fact that this is a prototype. Plus, I mean, look at this wiring. This wiring is not flight wiring. I've seen flight wiring on stuff. Let's poke this. No movement internally. All right, so will this come up now? Uh, let me go grab my screw bin and see if I have anything that matches it. Hi Moritz, we're tearing down a missile seeker. Carefully. Ooh, ooh, nope, thread slightly wrong. How about you? Eight thirty seconds? Nope, partial screw engagement. That's wrong. Not you. How about you? No, that's really wrong. Uh, places, Moritz. Places. How about you? Please be the right size, please. Ha ha! Now what if I screw this in and use this as a way to back it out? Will that work? Let's try it. Yeah, interesting places. Well, remember, I know places to get interesting stuff. Where else do you think I got my, what is it, 20 flare cores? 23 now. Yeah, I got 23 flare cores. No, it's actually not eBay. Let's gently torque this down. You gonna back it up? You gonna back it up? No? Okay. How about you? Gently torque it down. Hello? Release? No. Okay. No, I have not gotten the screws out. No, not NASA parts bin. NASA doesn't build missile sequels, remember? We're a completely civilian organization. No military application. Not Norton Sales. Norton Sales actually closed down about, what was it, five years ago? Which makes me really sad. Yeah, uh, I'm not West Coast, I'm East Coast. Hmm. Anyway, we'll continue removing this terrible, terrible stuff known as Silastic. Splat.
I would have liked to go to Norton Sales before they shut down. Sales. They're now apparently just a museum or renting of hardware. You can't purchase anything from them. That makes me really sad. Norton sold everything from like rocket engines to jet engines and everything in between. Not, uh, and this is not sketchy Russian. This is an American design. It was shipped from inside the U.S. as well. How the hell am I going to get this apart? No, they don't ship to Europe. If you know where to look, you'd be surprised what you can buy. It's called DLR. I don't think they'll give you anything, dude. How the hell is this put together? Oh, hell, that spacer mark. These screws go onto the tray as well. Hmm. Hmm. I'm just going to Google how to remove stuck screw. How to remove stuck Phillips screw? Yes. Uh, yes, Francis. The aim is to reverse engineer it and understand how this works, and then build into a w functional desktop model. Smack the screwdriver with a hammer. Mm, no. Four guaranteed tricks to remove screws. Remove the paint. No. WD-40? Sure. Why not? Screw extractors don't work. Yeah, thanks. That tells me not much that I already didn't know. Uh, I'm going to go grab the WD-40, and we'll just apply it to this. So I'm going to add a... Uh... Nope, nope. Nope. I need something a little taller than that. Uh, a random stack of stuff. How about you? You the right height? Oh, you're too short. An RF seeking version? Yes, I know how to do that. No, I will not disclose it. It's honestly not hard. Like, it's scary easy. Like, 90% of this stuff. If you understand how to do it, it's really, really not hard to build very, 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 very dangerous things. All right, there we go. Now it's held in place so it'll hold itself level while I go get the uh, schmoo. Might go get some liquid ranch, though. Okay, WD-40 Pog, go. And this is just practice for another one, something that, that is far more recent by a decade or two that's going to be coming my way soon. So now we wait. <laughs> How to do RF seeking? No. I know for a fact you're Polish. You can't hide from me. Uh, honestly, getting it compact and functional at the relevant frequencies is not that hard. The really hard part is not the secret section, it's the math. 
The whole assembly should remove because there's this dividing line at the back. Man, my fingertips are shredded again. Refurbishing those flare cores did a number on them. Two rings of screws. No, I think these ones are for internal ones. So now we wait. Hi, Eddie. No, Nuffly, I know you're Croatian. You can't hide. Wait till you get your hands on a cage 25, please. My God. If you do get your hands on a cage 25, send me some. I will tear it apart. I will document it. And then I will re engineer it smaller, better, faster, stronger. The $6 billion missile. SDR, Raspberry Pi, we got something we can't export. Yeah, a little bit more complicated than that. Just a little bit. Not that much, but a little bit more complex. I won't tell you how much more complex because that's probably trouble. Come on, WD-40, do your thing. Add some fancy antennas. Yeah, the Russians will probably sell you stuff. The Russians don't give a shit. They really don't. Do you have the money? Well, yeah, sure. Well, you can buy it. That's how they believe, which is fascinating. Which means you can get all sorts of fun stuff that you probably shouldn't have. Enough. You just use the build grant or whatever, the build, build grant? thingamajig right, there should be enough in these so that it can work its way down into the stuff migrating down in there at this point if the surface tension is to be believed. You guys use cruise missiles to remove snow? Odd, but also weird champ. I did us just want to buy a bunch of cool stuff and reverse engineer it to learn. Why well, I love doing this. It helped me become big brain. Hmm. We'll wait another like five minutes, see what it does. So I could tell these things. Eddie, it's because it's a shared channel that I had to write it in essentially third person. How about you? 
too big. Hmm. Hmm. Do some things. Clean out these other ones. Remove stuff from blades. Schmoofied it. Oh, wait. That felt like it moved. Does Ben ever stream? Uh, he streamed a couple times. For like once, maybe. Can't remember. Let's try rotating this again. That's way too small. Nope. Drill time? Drill time. Or let's grab this other one. Uh, nearing wit's end. So what if we do a, just a little hammer as a treat? A little bit of tappy tappy. Little bit of tappy tappy. Do I need a even bigger, flatter screwdriver? Do I have to go sacrifice one of my terrible drill bits? Do I have one over in this? Place? The biggest, lorgest bit. That's got good grip to it. Uh, how about anything other here? Uh, looks like no. Okay. Where is thingamajig? Where is thingamajig? Phillips number two. If I have to drill this out, I swear to God, I will drill it out. Really rather not. Yes, a hammer solves every problem, but so does C4. Oh no, you got locked out of your house? C4. Problem is, uh, you can't lock the house again after the fact. I want to gently pull this apart so I can get a good analysis of it. Reverse out. Ah, I uh, managed to hit the torque limits of this drill again, and it did not move. Angry. Nope. I think we might have to drill these. Which sucks. Because I do not know the inclination of the slope for the bevel. So clean off the schmoo. Clean. <sighs> I would like at least one of these to come out so I can get an analysis off of that one. Nope, I'm hitting the torque limits of this driver. And I really don't want to go get the brushless one because that'll probably just completely strip out 
And that would be bad. You can set up IEDs for the would-be intruder. I mean, yeah, true, but then you got to deal with the ATF. And I don't think you should do that if you have a dog. You know what? We're just going to do some more tappy, 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 tappy. Sorry if this hurts. Weld it, you'll have screw geometry. Let's try it. <clears throat> yeah, I think these are stuck. Must be Loctite. I think you're right. And if I had to guess, it'll be a similar screw profile to this. Yeah, we could do a very localized explosion, sure. But I would like to actually, you know, have this thing come apart. Yeah, I really think it's these ones, TBH. Because, yeah, I think I'm just going to go for drilling them. Because if I look here, look at that screw pattern. And if I flip it, I bet it's going to be almost a match for the diameter. Yeah, I think it's about this one. It's metal to metal. We've got this top aluminum plate and then this aluminum uh, shroud piece here. I could go get a torch. Hold on. This needs to be rotated to here. Yeah, now I could put this here and then this chalker block here. Butane torch the screw. Well, I got a propane torch. All my butane is uh, out. So we'll just have to use propane. And if the propane doesn't work, that's when we will go and just drill it. Stand by. I've got to go get it from the garage because I used it on uh, suspension components a while back. I would like this to go back together. Yes. A press, some bearings, and a screwdriver with a handle type thing. Uh, I don't think that'll work. So anyway, we'll do the one that's kind of far away. So I'll move this back. Move the glass away as well.
Top plate's aluminum. It appears the whole thing's built out of aluminum. All right, let's check that progress with the thermal. Uh, you won't have visibility because I can't find my VNC adapters. So that is about 290 degrees right now. We'll try that first. Uh, being careful not to burn this crap out of my hands. Because I'd really rather not be burned. Thanks. Oop. All right, stand by. Where's my number zero? This ain't it. I need my dummy thick drive. Ooh, it's moving. That's one moving. Slightly. Then it stopped moving. Damn it. So. Ah, oh, Jesus, this is. I mean, torque required is really straining the crap out of my huh, terribly scrawny arms. Uh, oh, hey, Doomish Fox. Welcome to the stream of uh, ours screaming at uh, his noodly ass arms. Go! Nope. Try this one again. Back it up. Nope. Nope. These that one shredded out. Fuck. All right. I think we'll just switch to blowtorching them. Because that seemed to get good progress. Kind of smoky. Not a fan of that. Noodle. Nope. All right, let's try some. Smell analysis of the smoke says kind of rubbery. Plus side, we didn't really get it that hot. Let's see how hot we are in thermal. So the whole back plate is right around 200 degrees of the hottest point. I'm pretty sure this, the flame was coming in some of these ones. No, I don't have uh, a pencil flame. I think you are drastically overestimating the amount of hardware and tools I have. Remember, jank. That's, ooh, man, that's toasty. Yeah, that plate really laterally transfers. We'll let that cool down. That's toasty. Wait, maybe I should just T-shock one of them.
Yeah, freeze the hell out of that. Hey, now it's cold. Once in a lifetime missile seeker. Except I've got two missile seekers. Yeah, those are frozen ass bolts right now. Plus, if I do a good enough job on this, uh, maybe the government will let me tear down other missile seekers. Keep blasting it with cryo. Freeze the absolute hell out of it. Band sawed in half. No, I want this thing to come apart and go back together. We're not going to saw it in half. Freeze, you little crap. Super glue back together, but do, do you know what super glue does to optics? It's a horrible, horrible thing. We're not going to water jet it. I think we're just going to drill drill out these screws. I'm going to try freezing the crap out of it first, though. All right. Freezing the crap out of it. One screw. Go. Nope. That screw's cold. So is the entire plate. I don't have a drill press. I have a really crappy uh, mill, but that's way too small. I think we're just going to drill one of these out. So assuming that the rest of these are based around the same size screw, which is a pretty good bet. A ratchet? Yeah, but they're all like huge. Crap. Come on, you can unstick, please. Left hand thread, I already tried. That was one of the first things I tried. <sighs> All right, we'll do a real slow drill because we assume that this is the same size. Assuming this is the same size, where the hell's my box of drill bits? Shoot the screw? <sighs> no. I would like this to be intact for analysis purposes. So I will not shoot the screw. That's a good start size. So we've got one drill bit. Here's the box of the other one. So we will pilot drill with this really pains me. Aluminum would have stripped out, you think? Grab the other drill, set it to maximum drill power. Always wide and deep flathead screws. I could do that. Yeah, I'll try that before I drill, drill it. Uh, where's my iPro? Where's my iPro? Rotary tools. 
I have to be real careful with the fog from this because I don't want to shrek my optics. Grinder wheels. Thing on the jug. I'm gonna mute the microphone during that so you don't uh, scream in horror and complain about your ears. Shoot the screw carefully. Well, the welder's a bit of a pain in the ass to set up. All right, I'm gonna go mute real quick so you don't bleed from your ears. Left-handed screws for obscure technical reason. I would not be surprised. But we're gonna probably sacrifice this one, which is the worst Shrek one, and try to grind that one out. All right, I'm gonna go mute the microphone so you don't uh, absolutely hate everything. But first, I'm gonna actually uh, masking tape off all apertures into this thing. So that way uh, I don't shrek those. So we're just gonna put that there. Tape these off because I do not want FOD inside this thing if I can help it. Screws haven't moved much. I'm currently FOD taping it. Yes, yes, yes. Hate me for the Harbor Freight Dremel. It goes faster than my legitimate Dremel, though. And I need more spinny spinny. Plus, uh, in case you didn't forget, I am not made of money. Otherwise, this would be coming at you at 4K with, you know, way, way, way better internet. But unfortunately, I am not made of money. There'd probably be monthly missile teardowns if there was. All right, we're killing the uh, microphone for... Okay, we're back. We have a Dremel slot. So now I'm gonna go grab a very lord flathead from my stash of bits and stuff. Damn, is that too big? Yeah, I gotta grind it a little bit bigger. Stand by, uh, more Dremel noise.
and we're back. So it's been slightly enlarged, and yeah, now it takes the bit. So let's try this and see where it goes. Please work, please work. I don't want to have to destroy more of this than I absolutely have to. Ah. Maximum power to reverse. Ooh, it rotated like five degrees, look. It's a smidge too wide. Stand by. So what I'm gonna do is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's ugly AF. Cue the smoke. No, we're not doing smoke again. Ooh, damn, that walked. Nope. Well, we made some progress. So let's try tightening it down again and then loosening it. Which I know it sounds weird, but this is actually a method that works decently good. God, I hate the smell of this dentist smoke. Yeah, that metal's just crap. Look at that. It's chowdering up. I think I'll push it back into alignment. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, grind it again, maybe. Ah. It's back in alignment. Sound isn't too bad. All right, I guess we'll just leave the mic on. All right, we ground it down pretty far. Uh, we already tried penetrating well, so we're just gonna try it again. Please work, please work, please work. I hate, forgot I hate flatheads. Yeah, no, that's just, I'm gonna grind that deeper. can be dissolved. No, we're not going to dissolve the steel. Sorry, chemo. Come on. Get the hell out of there. Damn screw. I, th I think we're going to have to just have to drill it. Just grind off the entire screw head. I mean, we could try that, but I really just want to drill it out first. Oh no. Chemo! Behave! So we're just gonna try a little bit of drilling on this one sacrificial screw head. Yeah, look at how bad it is. <laughs> it's not pretty. But as long as we keep the rest of the optics intact. Nope, that needs to be tightened more. Okay, it's tighter. Well, that just broke my thingamajig. 
No, I don't have a vise. And that just broke off the top of this drill bit. It's not gonna work. Damn it. I hate breaking my small bits. Let's try another one. No, I can't replace the housing. That's the thing. Jesus, this thing is... I think it's hard steel. And why was it... Wow, that just completely blunted that bit. Yeah, this bit's completely shot now. Well, good thing I've got a Dremel on hand. Sorry about your ears. Camera one end, where the hell, I'm gonna switch to my auxiliary camera. Do you take me for an idiot? I guess I can use this one. Uh, there. That metal's chowdering. In a way, it shouldn't be chowdering, is the thing. You know what? We're just going to grind this a bit more. I am being careful. This is surgical stuff. Look at how small like the damage zone is. We've, but we have to get this thing apart in order to understand how it works. Wait a minute. That's not steel in there. There's aluminum schmoo. Aluminum schmoo is unacceptable. Pokey boy. Look up a PDF. Yeah, but no, not quite. Cause I want to do actual analysis of this damn thing. More leverage. Uh, not with my scrawny ass noodle arms. Thank you. Go here and then we can give it the old tap a tap a clean out with this thing we do. This chowder's like cheap steel. He's all the way in Blacksburg. You know what, we're just gonna... 
blast this out. Well, on the plus side, I can see the profile of this thing. And yeah, it's about what I expected, which is a good thing and a bad thing. I don't know if you could see that there. Come on, focus. Why do you keep chowdering? God damn it! Uh, let's try a narrower one of these things. Yes, I murdered that screw because I had no other option. Do I have any smaller bits for that? No. Blah. If I can figure out how to do this thing, but Jay, well, doing that thing, but Jay, but hmm. Too small. Oh, that's even smaller. Uh, what do we got over here? That's a Phillips. Come on, box of mystery shit. Don't fail me. Ooh, this might work. Hey, it's the right size. Nope. Try the next size up. Try it. God damn it. Turn it right. Now let's try turning it left. Well, that was trash. Broken. Hmm. Far down is the thing. Uh, grinder bits. I might have a solution. Ha. I've already broken my teeth, or well, one of my teeth, once by n being in the field and not having a wire stripper. That was big regretty. My dentist laughed. Don't be an idiot. Yeah, that was a one out of five experience, solidly. Damn it, do I have to shim this? This is jank AF. Broke a tooth on a fork? Ouch. We're not renaming the stream this late into it. There we go. Now that has enough grip. 
So now we'll use the UFO shape grinding thing, the jig. Stainless steel is hard. That ain't working. Because I can just pull this out. Yeah, it's a forking tragedy. Ah! I hate this teardown so far. Show me the goodies. Damn it. Remove the schmoo. I don't have anything carbide, no. This is far from optimal, but it's what we're going to have to deal with. So what we're going to do is pull this craptastic idea of just wrapping in tape away. Trash a scalpel blade in the process because I don't care. I've got a box of them. Switch it out for this. The other screws coming out? No, they don't. No, we're going to not talk about the rest of the screws until we have one of these damn things out. This is probably not a good idea. Don't worry, chemo. I'm going to treat myself to a nice whiskey after this because I put myself through enough BS. Okay, so we're right about here. And if I jam this side down. That's where it gets stuck. That's the problem. Hello? Oh, we just had a minor interruption. I uh, unplugged it when I snagged my wire. Uh, half the screw broke off. Which is pog and unpog. You see? Only half the screw's there now. So what happens if I grab a pry bar screw and we just take the other half of the screw. Maybe just drill these crappers out? I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, at least the most important parts, the optics and electronics, are going to be okay. It's just this mechanical rear plate. Yeah, lens is fine.
this thing's gonna be real interesting to take apart. I'll tell you that. Just cut the whole rear plate off. No. Maybe I would if I had a lathe, but hey, uh, you guys wanna buy me a lathe? They're only like six hundred dollars. Nah, not here to simp to get a lathe. Though I really wish I had one. So it looks like there, if we uh, just drill it out uh, using that, we could use sweet, sweet Rona check. Yeah, no, the, that's my plan for using the uh, Rona check if I don't get screwed out of it again. Because we already know that they screwed me out of one. No, the $250 Harbor Freight one does not exist anymore. That was also like, uh, what was it, $550? Grab the next shredded most one. So we'll grab Soviet lathes too expensive. Yeah, no way in hell I can get one of them over here within a reasonable cost either. And I live in an area where there's not a lot of machine industry. So I can't get like, damn, that's a too big Phillips. The right size, but that one, you know, won't free up. So I got three of these really well bound ones. The Grizzly ones are okay, yeah, but they're also still like $600. So I don't know if I'll get the coronavirus check because I already got screwed out of the first one. And I do not enjoy being screwed out of the stuff that was apparently supposed to. Go to everybody, but they decided not to give it to me. God, I hate this metal so much. Uh, rip to technically still being a dependent. Where the hell is... I might have to go up and grab... I'll be back from the garage. I've got to go grab more screws or better bits. And I can have workbench of chaos. We're back. Ugh. Tag Tools has a, ew, no. I want one that has like a decent run out specs is the thing. And I can tell you for a fact, those Tag ones have a terrible run out spec. Which dog is already? I went and got the brushless DeWalt. This will be drill number three. I guess you know the drill at this point. Terrible jokes. Try this one because I'm running out of patience or frustration at this point. All right. Oh, that's better. And I want forward drive. Just gently drill this one out. 
how we could stage up a size to this one. Uh, until I get this thing open, or probably until like uh, 11 o'clock ish, when Kyle gets here. Progress, progress. Let's try this other most Shrek one. So that's when the thing with Jake fails. So that's my least wish. I don't feel like trashing it. That would suck. goes one. I'm not asking this thing to come out anymore. The $450 AliExpress lathe, uh, anywhere from decent to god awful, I've heard, based on a couple of reviews from people who know what they're talking about. Like, it's a good start point, but you gotta tear it apart essentially in order to get it to a good, solid start point. There you are. This is what I like. Gotta basically re hone the rails a bit, tram it out. There we go. So that's two screw heads gone. We've got these ones that are mostly intact left. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to grab the number zero out of here and attempt to use the brushless drill with way more torque than my noodly arms can apply. We're going to hope to hell it works. Because we're not asking. I at least want like two, maybe three of these to be retained as screws. That is not working. So we'll go turn down the torque, lower speed. Power. Still overcome with torque. So I guess we're going to be drilling. Oh, we're not. Nope, they're not working. Slowest speed possible is currently rigged. And it's not working. We've got to drill them all. Damn it. I was hoping not to have to. But it is the way it is. And so. Damn, is this thing blunted the hell out already? <sighs> Gotta be joking. Yeah, it is. God. How about we 
we take a break? Everything's closed. All right, that drilled nicely. So let's drill another one out. Now we just follow these up, sharp cobalt bits from McMaster. We could, but we're like 90% of the way there right now. That's another screw top gone. Another one gone. One more to pop out this way. It's another one gone. Now we can actually like screw in the thing the jigs to remove the back plate, which means removing ah, all the crap from the workbench. But first, we're gonna remove the thought. Sweep all that crap off. Switch it back to workbench. Put blow torch down, brush up drill over here, get that out of the way. Brush drill number one, brush drill number two. Unplug this thing. Remove all of this thread experimentation stuff from my tray. So I will need you and you to release the rear plate. The rest of this can be moved out of the way. Take this, this one can go over here along with this. Cutoff wheel goes over here. WD-40 goes here, and then that goes out of the way. All right, we're back. And I can move the scalpel out of the way. All the screws have been removed in a suboptimal way, but still removed. So let's remove our FOD covers. Didn't want the metal shavings getting inside and shracking everything up. So I covered all the ingress ports with tape. It's not blue tape, but I don't care. Anyway, we're about to pop the cover. How many people are left watching this after this total train wreck of a teardown started? All right, it's that there. And let's try here to give us a good amount of leverage. Gently crank these down to raise it slowly is the plan. Flathead. There's my Phillips. Slowly apply pressure. Huh. Interesting. 
So let's unscrew this one here, move it up over here, because it looks like there even might be plastic molding. Yeah, looks like we're about to pop the rear cover, maybe. Switch that out for, where did I put a large drive bit? Apply some torque. Let's move this one. We are making progress. I just gotta wait for this piece over here to fail. And let go. All right, sounds like we've got it walking around the outside. So grab another one of these, gently pry up. Right, now it's undo this and walk it around to another spot. Rotate this around. We'll start here. Or no, not that one. Let's try this one. I think this might be injection molded plastic as well, which would be a very interesting construction technique. Slowly walking around. Come on. Damn, where's the thread going on that? That's not normal. So we'll just unscrew this one and walk it over. I do not have an x-ray gun. You want a fun one? All right. I can't do x-ray crystallography. So it looks like there's a gasket, as well as these threaded thingamajigs, which are in between. You know, it looks like a gasket. With a washer. Cool. So, I need... I'm just going to switch that out real quick with this. There's not silastic. So I set this to maximum reverse and slowly back it out.
This one shreked its threading. I think it caught on the thingamajig, and we'll just grab another one. Stand by. This should not go anywhere. I'm gonna go grab another one. Use my saw. All right, good news, I have more of them. It looks like a glued paper gasket, if I had to guess. So we'll slowly tighten this, and hopefully we'll... See, there's paper in here. It's like partially resin gunked. Yeah, there we go. Let's pry it out slightly. Yeah, there's definitely. See, here's a sample of it. Looks like a paper gasket, if I had to guess. Space grade paper. Okay, cool, making progress around the outside. I think I've got to unscrew these. We just grab flathead screwdrivers and slowly work our way around. Lockheed's buying AR? Damn. It's defense mergers and acquisitions out there, everybody. Yeah, we're down to that. Last spot holding it in. Which means I just need to tap a tap a this. Come on, release your little piece. investors are going to be happy with everybody emerging. Don't know if the government will, because that takes more things down to like single suppliers. And they don't like that that much. Oop. And failure. We insti instigated a failure. Pog, 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 pog. Alright everybody, start dropping pog champs. Because uh, we have release one. The hell? Now this is really confusing. How's this thing held together? How the hell do you take this thing apart? 
We might not be able to get this thing apart, dude. Because look, that's plastic there. Confusion. Confusion? Contusion? What the hell? Uh, where's my wire cutters? There they are. No, I didn't melt the plastic. It's a little more confusing than that. Because look, it's a solid brick of plastic back here. My bewilderment intensifies. I think it is completely potted. That's frustrating. How the hell to get this thing together? Yeah, no, there's definitely bolts and potting. Well, I could definitely still hold it together because there's these plates here which go all the way down to these below surface ones. And these can work as indexes. Dissolve it in acid? No! Sorry about the clipping. Alright, so. We've got a bunch of wires egressing. So I guess I'll tack this thing back into place with our long bolts. so it doesn't go anywhere. I can try acetone on a little dab of it. They were threaded insert, which is what all those things I was snipping was. Threaded insert coils. thing about this is there's no friggin' serial numbers on it, so I can't, like, call the government and ask if they have any manuals for it. Hey, you guys got any manuals for serial number blah 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 blah? It's old enough that you could probably just FOIA it. Uh, here we go. There's a 
those four coming out of there. I've got to unscrew that a little bit. So free out this piece. more on this one. Alright, that's snagged, so we're gonna have to actually remove the plate. around a coil so the plate's gonna have to come out uh, it's sort of open oh, come on oh I still got one of these screws on there why aren't you opening oh there's still a screw in place me dingus big dumb dumb hour actually unscrew and reposition now we're just going to take the plate off so just thread you down make sure all clear all clear alright locked in now let's replace this plate I hear you man I hear you first thing to get crotched some missiles fire their shape charge straight through the optical stack that includes a high definition high frame rate FLIR I'm gonna tell you that one's like wow that one sucks but remember you're throwing away an entire targeting computer every time you take a shot with a missile I guess we'll take a look at the front of it now. After I bolt this plate back on so it doesn't skitter away. Alright. I'm going to put these down on the ground and re bolt down the optics piece so it's not rattling in the breeze where it can get cracked. Just one screw. One screw looks fine. And replace down this massive aluminum block. So that way it doesn't also bounce all over the place and damage cables. just two corner screws. OK. 
Okay, that's snug down. So now we can start working on the front again. Hmm. Thing I do want to do is. Some parts of this are not, are just bent thin film metal. Spray painted black. We still need to figure out. Well, that moves slightly. How to gently get this apart. Okay. Hmm. Welcome to the hell of trying to figure out how the hell stuff is built. It's way out of your depth. So if that's there, and that's there, I don't want to mess with those two screws because those are retention screws for that mirror that exits there. I think our best bet is going to be that. Or we could try to get signals out of this thing. What do you say? Try to get signals out of it? Because that's pretty easy. Let's get signals. All right. Power up the oscilloscope. Oh, this is doing a number on my fingertips. <laughs> Look at how shrek they are already. Yeah, let's try some non-destructive because we did some destructive teardown. Let's see if this thing, if we can even get like signals out of these things. Luckily, we've got NIR sources that can probably hit that bandpass. Pretty high intensity as well, which means we could probably just get a raw signal out of it. Okay. So enable channel two. We can probably just T-tap onto one of those back there. Stand by, I gotta go. Ah. Step out of the way to grab a probe. All right, DC coupled. We're going for A and D as our targets here. So we will go tap there and here. Why am I imaging at 100 milliseconds? I want channel one to be, say, 100 millivolts. Give me channel two to be 100 millivolt steps. All right, cool. So if we instrument that pin and Here. Hold on. And then I shine my NIR flashlight directly down bore. 
that were on. Oh wait, I covered the board. Ooh. I'm just gonna actually remove the cover to shine this straight down the bore. Direct sensor impingement style. All right, so lights shining directly down on the sensors. Pretty high intensity. So if I put this here and then touch this to here. I think I could see something. Not much response. So let's power up uh, and see what kind of resistance we're getting across them. Yes, I do need more hands. I always need more hands. I want resistance. How much resistance are we seeing across each channel? Open circuit. Let's try another one. open circuit. Open circuit. Open circuit. So they're all reading open circuits on the backs of the A through D inputs and outputs. Let's try, give me capacitance. Capacitance can tell us a lot about what's in there. All right, we're pulling actually wait a minute let's see how much voltage we're getting because the capacitance is very so if I instrument across you and you ooh that's cool let's try if I and this on there. How much do I see? One hundred and forty millivolts. Let's try the other one. About one hundred and forty millivolts. Let's try you. 50, no, 80, 90, 100, 140 millivolts. About 140 millivolts in all four. Interesting. What do you and you do? Huh. You and you. Intriguing. So the hell is this connector up here? We've got another connector up here. I'm very confused. What the hell's going on? We're getting 140 millivolts each on each of those. There's gotta be a voltage supply. We've got a black wire, and we've got a red wire going into this. See? Black wire here. Red wire here. As well as a brown wire and a yellow wire. Huh. Hmm. Intriguing. 
I have no idea that what's going on inside here. Gonna snug this back plate back down. All right, where does the black wire go? Black wire goes to the bottom there. Where's my magnifier? I don't need that on right now. Got a magnifier around here somewhere. I'm very disappointed that this is not as modular as I thought it was. I'm very curious as to why they made it essentially single piece. It could be for G resistance, but it could also not. Where the heck is my magnifier? Because I don't, I don't have enough low clearance under that microscope to use it as a magnification system. It's here somewhere. I've got an optical triplet version. I can also go grab my crappy doublet. crappy doublet magnifier enhance set focal plane down about 12 mil lower power so let's see we've got orange third pin white coming over here Red going there, a bug. Hmm. Geez, I don't think it even approached 15 is the thing. I don't see it doing that. At most, probably like six. Remember, this thing's pretty much a kick off of airplane and let it do its thing. So wait, 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 hold on a minute. The orange is bound to the red. So that's black and orange down there. Right? No. Orange is here. Let's check resistances across that. Two wire resistance check. So if orange goes number two, black is all the way over here. I'm reading 11 meg and counting up. 12 meg. Alright, so we got 12 mega ohms across what I have think is the power, but I'm not sure. What I do know for a fact, however, is looks like this entire side is just ground. Pretty weird champ. Broken cable here that looks like it came off of there. That's one of these So you need to be bound to there, where all the others are. Interesting. Another one over here. Yeah, that's bound to that. Man, this is jank AF. 
No, no, this is not an, this is not the uh, cooled variant of an AIM-9. This one's a much earlier ver uh, laser variant, which is why we have four outputs here. So I've so far gathered that we've got what looks like power and ground on one side of this. So it looks like this is entirely almost power and ground at the top two. Then we might have a negative supply to reverse bias the diodes, maybe. So this looks like it's entirely signals. What this is with its six cables is, I'm not sure. Hell, I don't know what kind of connector this is, but it's on a nice milled piece of something. Huh. And we've got ink on two of the top one that, but one of them doesn't go anywhere. One is black shrouded, which is this one right here. There's another black shrouded one over there. I will count them out. So I've got four, five, and six. We've got six of these, which go to this thing. And this thing is something. You don't just have, yeah, no. So the uh, nitrogen cooled nine is uh, the, what is that? Started with the Charlie. Yeah, I want to say it started with the Charlie. No, I think it might be the D. So we got a genuine mystery going on. And we can't see inside of it. Hmm. No, no. The C was uh, Sarah. Sarah is the semi-active radar homing sidewinder, not the C. The C was an intermediary. I'm not sure what this was. No, this, it was the Sarah. The Sarah was the uh, semi-active radar homing sidewinder. Did the C? I'm not sure. I found the Wikipedia articles to have a lot of issues with them. Bug. out one side of this because I think one side of this is literally all ground. Yeah, one side of this is literally all ground. So I'm just going to put a Sharpie mark on that side. So this is all ground. So let's see. So if that one is A, B, C, and then this one's going to be D because its label fell off. Okay. The wiring job is crap. Hell, one of them's like corroded to hell and back. Hmm. How long have we been going? Oh man, we've been going for almost two and a half hours. I think I'm going to take a quick break, uh, go get something to drink, eat some snacks, and be right back. Proceed to talk amongst yourselves and uh, discuss who's got the best idea on what the hell this thing could be or how we could get into the front of it. Because I want to get into the front of this thing in the Soyuz clock.
come up with some ideas amongst yourselves. And uh, here, you can observe the mathematics stuff here that makes this thing work, as well as frame that there, and a quadrant detector. Enjoy. No, I'm taking a break, Dr. Bead. You can't stop me. Boop. Stay. Now I'm going to go mute myself and
Alrighty, I am back from the snack and the quick break. Hello. How many did we fall off during this uh, side note? How many of you guys are still here? Am I screaming into the void endlessly? Wondering if anybody actually still exists on stream. I'm gonna draw. Oh! Hey, CD Hippo. How you doing? Hmm. Nathan, let's hope you can actually get that oscilloscope. Because they're incredibly useful pieces of equipment, especially around the lab. Oh, we're back up. We lost 16 people, or we're at 16 people? Anyway, once I finish my snacks, go to my snack bar because it's good, and my coffee. This is like I had a not enough for like a regular ass cup of coffee, so I just dumped it in with some milk and called it a day. Probably later, I'm just gonna add some whiskey to that for the lulls, but also treat myself to after this disappointment. Oh, we're at 16. Not bad. So next up, we're gonna draw up a diagram of what the hell's going on up here. Or at least the best I can tell. Because I believe there might be a circuit board in here. Although, can somebody figure out how I can contact Creative Electron here in the States? Because I want to get this thing x-rayed. Ooh, $50 cheaper. Nice. A uh, larger screen is most likely going to be uh, more useful than record length. Yes, when you're starting out later on in life, but this is your starter oscilloscope, so it's perfectly fine to have just a larger screen that's a little bit easier to use. This is a starter oscilloscope. Later on down the line, you're going to want to probably get a higher uh, uh, higher bandwidth, more channels, and uh, just in general, more hardware. I could get an x-ray at my dentist cam. Uh, they already helped me out in the past with x-raying some of my work boards. Oh, that's where my magnifier went when I was there last. Uh, they're closed until like next year though, right now for obvious reason. But I need to figure out how I can get Creative Electron or I can just make a road trip up to Ohio and talk to my friends who run an assembly line that has a very big uh, x-ray. You know what? I'll probably do that. Hang out with some of my other buddies up there. Yeah, I could probably justify that, maybe. Straight shot. Any percent quick drive? No, not any percent. I'd probably camp out. Probably in the mountains. How many of these do I need just to buy build a mount X-ray machine? Well, I wouldn't want to build my own because uh, that's big no-no according to my uh, health physicist friend. On the other hand, for most small stuff, I really just want to drop down to uh, drop a couple thousand, if I had a couple thousand to drop, on a, uh, let me see, what are those things called? Those are T-something or others, but they're desktop, no, stop beeping, scaring the crap out of me, uh, but it's a desktop biopsy x-ray, and those are favorite among uh, hardware hackers because they're decently cheap easy to interface with and have nice resolution for the money. He says I can have one of those if I go get the trainings and then register it with uh, the Department of Health. So I'm like, sure, I'll do that. Easy enough. Yes, Nathan, I do need to go down to Nashville and uh, do a cooking with Joey B. Anyway, snack time's over. So we've got what looks like a one, two, three, four, five, six, Six, seven. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we've got uh, one, two, three, four. All right. So here's what we got we've got a capacitor here. These are all bridged to ground. 
all right? This one is bridged down one, which is connected to orange and red. Then, yep, so this one is a, a 0.47M 50 volt. Uh, then we've got third pair down has another capacitor. This one is ZF5. And that one is connected to yellow. Alright, so we've got yellow there. Then we've got brown. No, wait, this is brown, not yellow. And then you are. Oh, that one's brown. White. Brown, white. Skip. Yellow. Okay. Yeah, it's just completely potted behind. So then we've got A, D, B, C. So this is QPD. So you got your QPD up there. So I'm pretty sure that this is power. This, well, one of these I'm betting is going to be a negative voltage bias because if you negative bias your photodiodes, it allows you to get to quad photodiode. Uh, here, this will explain it pretty well. It's literally four photodiodes in one thing. And then it's numbered like this. So you've got uh, your A, your B, your C, and your D segments. And then using these uh, formulas, you can get your X and Y values of your light spot. Which, if you grab a random thing like this lens, you could focus down. As you can see, there's a dot there. Or it's not really that good of a presentation there. Hold on. So if you focus it, you could sort of get an image of the room. It's really hard to show, but I can see images of the two. Can you see? No, damn it. Yeah, no, it's really hard to do that one. Uh, let me go grab another lens from my stack of stuff. random box of optical elements. So if you take a lens and you focus it like this, you could probably see maybe kind of Yeah, can you see those See that one? That's if I focus this kind of and wave my hand here. Can you see my hand shadow? That's cuz you're get projecting the image of this upper part here. Now, I think this does have a circuit board in it, TBH. I don't have any transimpedance amplifiers that are working right now. I fried my last one. But if you've been watching the streams for a while, this is what a transimpedance amplifier looks like sometimes. I'm currently in the middle of designing a better one, but I do really want to try bringing this thing to life. I've just got to figure out how to get the control of the uh, uh, electro the coils in here that allow it to actually steer the seeker head. Which I'm not sure how to read those, but I'm betting if I use my, uh, what is it called? LCR meter. It'll tell me like, hey, that's got inductance to it. Which I can actually go grab right now. We can test some of these. Okay. 
If you're an electronics tinkerer and you don't have one of these things, get it. They are incredible pieces of equipment. They're like 20 bucks. And here, I'll demonstrate it for you. So if we connect it across this capacitor here and here and press the button, watch, it'll tell me. Oh, it's showing two diodes. Weird. I don't know, let's connect it across one of these terminals. See what it tells me it is. And you. It might be that it's seeing two diodes from what it's connected to. I don't have any op amps that at work. Aha! See? It is a diode. So we got about 146 picofarads capacitance, uh, dark current of 20 microamps, and forward voltage of 2.94 volts. So let's go plug this into another random set of thingamajigs on here. Let's try this and this. Try a four corner pair. And see what it tells us is in there. Unknown part. Okay. Or open circuit. Let's try here. No part. Let's try here. No part. Let's try here. Nothing. Let's try mixing it up a bit and swapping this to here. Oop, get back on there. Ooh, we got a capacitor. 150 puff. That means we're connected to something. Let's try here. 167 puff. Try here. That's all capacitance. Let's try putting it back on the top row. Nothing on top row. Let's go to the bottom row. Hundred fifty puff. This could all just be decoupling, which would be kind of weird, champ. But it also just could be that. Let's try it. Go tapping another one as a reference. And here. I don't think it'll just read seeker head. Whoa. 1.176 mic. Let's try this. It's between the upper row. 1.175 mic. Let's try a random one back over here, because that just could be... Yeah, that's the same across all those. Which makes me believe that just might be that. I think that's all capacitor banks down there. Interesting. Hmm. So we know these are reading as photodiodes. The question is, are they just the photodiodes, or are they connected to the rest of the circuit? So if that's all caps, it makes me wonder, what the hell is this other thing? Well, on the plus side, this thing got put back together, kind of. So I can actually like display it. Hmm. Intriguing. Cause I don't know what the hell is going on with this. Just putting that screw back. Very intriguing. Alright, who's got ideas as to what the hell could be going on here? Yeah, Michael, I'm still at it. Uh, we're coming up on three and a half hours in. TBH, this thing's probably going to keep me up for 
fair bit. We got the back off, the whole thing's potted. Uh, we started figuring out like pinouts of what's going on up here. Uh, saw the horror show that is the wiring. And are still confused as to what the hell we're gonna uh, do about the front of it. Uh, we've got a rough schematic of what's on the back of it. I'm pretty sure black and white are power. I think there might be a circuit board in here that has transit impedance amplifiers on it. This could be a switch block for your capacitor constants for time charge. This one might be have been for resistors to change your gain. Yeah, I think it could be that you switch in and out resistors here because there were six pins going to here. If there's six pins here, that shows that uh, there's three possibly going to each. No, wait. Yeah, three. No. It could be voltage ground or it could be ground before for the. No. That doesn't make sense. So the circuit is most likely in the potted part, yes. I'm going to have to get an x-ray to figure out what the hell it is. You think the local hospital would be uh, down to let me borrow their CT machine real quick and just go uh, Hello, yes, uh, local hospital radiology department. Yeah, can I borrow your CT machine to do some missile reverse engineering? Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. It's, it's aluminum. Aluminum plate here, and actually I think this entire forward part's plastic. Because look here. Look at the texture. It's plastic. And then it goes to switches back to aluminum. I'm pretty sure this thing is mostly plastic. Call them on stream? No, because that would pretty much dox me. There probably was a mold, yeah. I think... I don't know what kind of plastic that is, though. It's got bubbles in it. Here, I'll switch over to the higher definition camera so you can see it better. If we switch to our auxiliary camera, here we go. Yeah, this one's 1080p. And if I grab my flashlight, there, you can really see the texture now. See what I mean by it looks like it's definitely plastic. There's definitely structure here. I think that's might be ABS, but I'm not 100% sure. How hard is the plastic potting? Well, give me a sec. I'm going to scratch at it with a scalpel. Not super hard. Because it comes up with this. Meanwhile, this other stuff feels like GF 10% glass fiber. Maybe? Yeah, this stuff comes up easy. This stuff, not so easy. This fill material feels low density. I can try poking it with a, a Q-tip that has some... We can try different solvents. I've got acetone on hand. Acetone. Glass fiber? Nylon, you think? Maybe? Does not appear to be dissolving. Try the upper part. Ooh! Yeah! Upper part started dissolving. No, the back plate is aluminum. That's been anodized. This might be expanding plastic, but I know for a fact, yeah, I can feel that gripping and dissolving. Look at that. Here, I'll, I'll pull it over there. It's not lightweight PLA. Does nylon dissolve with acetone? See, look. That's acetone. Result. Focus. Focus. Come on. Yeah, you can see it there. Yeah, test that, Michael, real quick. I'm going to write this down on my note page for transfer to my book of notes later. 
Okay, so it's not nylon. Uh, it doesn't behave like ABS either, because ABS gloops. I'm not 100% sure what's what this is. Wait a minute, can I tell by the smell of it? We're gonna do some AVE tier stuff here. That one smells real bad. Well, it smells like hell, so it's got sulfur in it, I can tell that. What does that smell like? Not nylon. It could be phenolic. It's got a slight gritty feel to it. I think it's... Oh, phenolic doesn't melt though. Phenolic burns. Both of them melt. This top part melts easier. So I'll note that down. Sulfur smell. It doesn't smell like PVC. Because PVC smells like... Uh, War crimes. War crimes and chlorine. Hey, it's it's a good ass way to tell of what it's made out of. Cause I'm familiar with like the smells of certain plastics. This doesn't match either of them. It's not a butyl, because it's not rubber. I don't know what the hell it is. It's not ABS. Maybe. It could be an ABS alloy. I don't know what ASA smells like. I know what PLA smells like. But I'm not hundred percent sure. So I'm also gonna note down lower. Bakelite is... No, it doesn't smell like nylon either. Uh, Bakelite is a phenolic, as far as I remember. And I've got... That looks like Bakelite up here. I could try that. Yeah. That's phenolic. It is not melting. Yeah, no response there. Uh-oh. Don't type on your laptop with acetone on your gloves. Surefire way to destroy your keys. You almost had a bro moment. I can also try isopropyl. Because why not, right? Maybe it'll respond to isopropyl. Squeaky, 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 squeaky. It's like just surface dirt. Yeah, it's surface dirt. Let's try this other one. No, no response. You want to try some... Uh, Spirit? It's the, well, it could be the 60s through the 80s. I'm not sure. Because there's still Bakelite in use. Bakelite being used here makes me think probably 60s, maybe 70s. I'm not actually sure as to how old this is. Here, we can try what if it responds to hexanes and pentane. Because I happen to have that just sitting around. I use it for cleaning circuit boards. You respond to that. No. How about you? No. You respond to that. No. Okay. Yeah, it's just like QD electronic cleaner. So responds to acetone. Hmm. 
I don't think it's asbestos infused. Flux clean and brake clean. Yeah, I can't find like any good flux cleaner that doesn't cost a left nut right now. I did manage to get some more isopropyl alcohol though. I'm not about to discover hypergolic propellant. Well, we know it melts. Kinda. We know it smells bad. I mean, of course it does. It's a plastic. It doesn't feel like asbestos. Don't ask me how I know that. Just don't. Hmm. Hmm. Hold on. No, I'm not uh, brave enough to melt the entire back structure off with acetone. Because it, I think this entire front section is also acetone uh, dissolvable. Let's scratch off some of the paint. Because why not? Damn, this paint is hard as hell. Yeah, see, that's plastic underneath. Yep. Focus. See how I took a chunk out of it? It's the same plastic, I think. Hmm. I think the best bet is going to be to x-ray this. Not that it I. I thought this was built out of, like, aluminum and stuff. Maybe, the, I thought this part was, like, possibly a spacer. But no, the entire thing's just potted. It's fascinating. I know with the Limas, they are actually, like, full potted. They have pucks, electronic pucks that are potted individually. I could switch off my soldering station. Hmm. So entire forward structure is the plastic. Okay. Hmm. No, I don't think I'll need to depaint to x-ray. The x-rays will punch straight through. What's also interesting is this mirror is not a first surface mirror. It's a second surface mirror which strikes me as slightly odd. It's maybe an import unit? No, that, they, they'd have to spin up like an entire line to build this. It is the government. They do have a lot of money. And it's the military industrial complex, which means they have even more money. No, the... No, no, no. It's got the it's got the infrared pa uh, pass f uh, filter with the viz stop. That black glass. Let me go get one from my stash. Yeah. See, here's one black glass that if you stick it here and you grab say a really bright light it only passes the infrared or if I grab an infrared light see how bright that is because that's just infrared pass no I can't wait I have an endoscope USB endoscope. Let's have a look. Will it even fit? No. 
Well, I can fit this down in that port. Uh, stand by. I'm going to find somewhere to plug this in. Yeah, that extension, yeah, that extension's plugged in. Cool. All right. Yeah, I'm going to enable this thing. So we'll add another one as a do, 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 and go. Add an endoscope and add this as a source. It's absolute crap quality, but I don't think we care. Video capture device three, and I want to select USB 2.0 PC camera. Activate device default custom, and I want 480 highest FPS. Apply. Expand. No. Deactivate. Activate. Hello. Hello. Uh, oh, hey, it's Kevin. Uh, which Kevin? There's like 12. Configure video. Camera control? No. Okay. Deactivate. Activate. Alright, I'm just going to unplug it and replug it. Ah, Astro Kevin. This doesn't help a ton. Well, I don't think that thing's working. So I'll just delete that. We'll switch it back to the auxiliary and I'll just go. Camera. It should be the only one it has left to select. Okay. Well, it seems like OBS has seized all of my cameras. I don't know how to make this thing work. That's making me kind of sad. If I switch this one to well I don't think it's working back to the C920 uh, huh. well I think that rear bus is actually overwhelmed with cameras right now I've got uh, seven of them plugged in I think. Hmm. I think this thing's been dropped though, based on the snarling pattern here. Cause look at that. Focus. Yeah, see that? It looks dropped and bent. Yeah, the uh, complete sidewinder on the F14. I believe that would be a Lima or Mike with, uh, did it have these fins? The double uh, diamond dog legs, but not the super strong dog leg. Yeah, but UMD is like closed right now. If it wasn't the Rona, I'd call him up and ask him. I mean, the Navy, the Naval Research Lab's not that far because I drive past them on the back way home. But again, they probably won't let me do it to have a look inside this. Uh, let's see. Aberdeen's kind of far, but they've also probably won't let me. No, 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 I am not building my own x-ray, ever. No, 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 bad. Hard, no, uh, hard radiation like that scares me.
because I really don't feel like getting a hard X rays uh, and dealing with that headache. Plus, uh, the closest thing we have to an HOA deliberately prohibits uh, what is it? Nuclear research and high energy accelerators, and I feel called out. Yeah, okay. Not the super strong dog leg. That's a Liam or Mike. the stuff required to do the thingamajig. Maybe? It's too small a comparison. I don't think... Oh, this retaining ring, maybe? I'm gonna have another poke around here. Ha 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 ha. Sorry, Andy. You've gotta pay for the only fins in order to get the high resolution pictures. The only thing posted on there is missile fins. And remember, Andy, those are Lima front fins, not your X-ray rear fins. Your entire missile type is wrong. Yeah, it's interesting that there's like this gap here. Here, I'll switch it to the top view. There's still research happening in person? Yeah, but will they let me in? There we go. Yeah, you need you wanted the X-ray rear fins. So if you look here, there's a gap. Which strikes me as interesting. We could try ingressing via the front. Which would be a really weird way of doing it. Yeah, you want the AIM-9X rear fins, the actuated fins. That's what you were asking about previously. No, you are not. Yes, you do have to pay me for those pictures. You need both? Careful not to destroy the mirror. Oh boy. Kruger. See, I have no idea if this was a test bench demo unit. I don't know. It could have been a captive carry test unit. Hmm, that one really doesn't want to move. So we'll go up a size. That one still doesn't want to move. We'll get back to that one later. This one's really covered in paint. Maybe this is just a retention ring and this entire front piece slides off. And it's held in place only by paint. Maybe? No, you can't have access to the archives. I have many gigabytes of photos of the AIM-9 series. I also have many parts of actual AIM-9s. access to the archive is restricted because it's basically got everything you need to build one hmm so I see a screw down there just below the surface is there a matching screw over here No, but there's frames. And that one's for rotation lockout of that mirror there. And then there's a spin lock lens holder there. Maybe it's credence to the idea that it is just a metal shroud. But the first part I'd have to remove is this. Parts for a 1983 BMW. Why do I want an 83 BMW? Oh, 
yeah, those uh, restricted FPGAs are kind of lame, which is really annoying because some of those basic tier ones are just like, oh, we're making this ITAR restricted or EAR, more likely EAR. Yeah, this looks like it was dropped and bent this. The question is, how do you remove this without shattering that glass? Because I bet that's the answer to how we get this apart. It's glass. Because if I gently tap on it, that's glass. Hmm. I don't want to shatter that. I know the mirror is also glass. We'll just move that gunk. Heat and pop? Uh, don't really feel like that. Yeah, Cam, I don't think uh, sleeping on this is a good idea for how uh, bony I am. It'll probably break ribs or something. I can't tell if this screws on or if it's glued in. If Bread was here, he'd be going, glue on Roach. Hmm. Well, it's definitely black coated to reduce the reflections hmm. the other problem is I don't know where's my scalpel I'm gonna have a pokey 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 Definitely looks like it's held in place partially with. Don't scratch the absolute crap out of the mirror. there so that's oh there's more silastic it's a little bit more silastic there okay I've ascertained that this is a metal piece behind here so we'll zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. I know this here is kind of plastic goop. So this one looks like it's silastic in place. But I want to break it free. So I can unscrew it. Uh, no, it's not worth dropping 90 on a forward fin. My full set of four forward fins cost me 120 bucks. Again, uh, I know where to acquire things. Ooh, no, I nicked it. Damn, that sucks. It's not like
like this thing's pristine condition anyway. This is definitely like paint glued into place, which is really weird. I wonder how many pieces that comes in. A reasonable price for a single thing's about like 50, maybe 60 bucks in single quantity. They're not, it's not like they're super rare. There's literally hundreds of thousands of these missiles out there. And a good chunk of them have gotten decommissioned. It means that the parts are available. I don't know why people price jack the hell out of them. It's not like they're impossible to find. Unlike some of the parts I have. Please don't be stripping out. Yeah, there's teardowns on YouTube and Hackaday of they don't go far enough as the thing. Hmm. We might go in with a flathead instead. go another one down oh that one had a spacer oh these all have spacers it's just that that one came out okay and we got these two also going to get unscrewed via flatheads. There we go. What am I doing? Where am I going to school for? Uh, I'm going to school for electrical engineering, but I do cross domain stuff. I'm not limited to only electrical. I also do mechanical, aero, RF, and pretty much everything in between. I like multi-classing as much as possible. Yes, I am still technically in college, even though I've been uh, working professionally for coming up on five years. Because I don't even have a degree yet. All I need to get one. Multidisciplinary engineering. Yes, I'm still at it. I am don't easily give up. Right, so, oh, that's, those are the retainers for the forward mirror, it looks like. So, yeah, that those are retainer pieces to hold the forward mirror in place. Gently poke around, prod it around. No, it does not want to move forward yet. Okay, so we'll go in at it. Nope. A long screw. So what you're looking at is a parabolic mirror from a cast. Whoa. Whoa. That's a strong magnet. Oh yeah. There's a big ass. Oh yeah. Look at that. It's solidly stuck. So if I, look at that. Hold on, if I pull this over here, watch. Look at that. Magnet. So if I hold it like this, oop, get over here. Yeah, look at that. Tick. Look at that magnet go. Oh, 
too small, one size up. Let's try this one with a ball drive in. Yeah, that's the right size. No, it's slightly too big. Damn it. Let's try it in the media area. Oh yeah, you know why it uses magnet? The magnet allows it to use cage, uncage coils, and then use several smaller coils to change its point direction. By energizing this one here and this one here in opposite poles, guess what it does? It pushes it this way. Flip it around, it pushes it this way. You've set all of them equivalent and it holds it in place. And by varying the intensities of drive, you can move it around. Now, the way the spinning ones work is similar, but they do it slightly differently in that instead of going completely off of a giant magnet, it's spinning. So you switch them on and off, and they have a big-ass cage coil, which locks it in place in the center. And by pulsing on and off the multiple poles, you can spin up and maintain a certain uh, rotation rate on the uh, seeker head. So it works like a brushless DC motor, which is exactly what later got spun out into being used on checkout, uh, supermarket checkout machines. You know those laser things? Yeah, the original ones were derived from the Sidewinder. So let's see, this is center, so we go. One direction has a lot more throw, most likely because, yeah, this one was mounted. So if that's zero axis, yeah, this is almost certainly designed to be mounted like this. So if it's mounted with this side looking down, this allows you more down view and then left and right. So yeah, it's most likely mounted like this. So that way it gets more down sight when you're uh, aiming at it. It's got an oval, uh, oval layout though. Anyway, continuing to unscrew this. How about you. Ooh, are you rotating? Yes. It's a balancing game of figuring out the right size to jank it, because this is not a perfect teardown. I haven't quite figured out how to do everything completely yet. I'm probably going to reinstall two of these. Don't go fod and fall inside. I'm going to probably reinstall two of these mirror retainers in opposite corners so that way I can have the mirror stay in place. So I don't want the mirror coming loose randomly. Switch over to finer point tweezers. We're going to install a mirror retaining clip. But this is telling me a lot about how these are constructed, which is fairly important when you're trying to understand how missiles work. Because the more you understand about how it's constructed, you understand their assembly lines. Most teardowns aren't perfect. True. I'm also coming at this from the highly uneducated outsider view. I know literally nothing insider information. Can't break classification if you don't know anything classified. I'm not a spicy boy after all. But this is all part of my grand plan to become a spicy boy. Because I want to do this professionally. I want to figure out how enemy missiles work so we can defend against them more effectively. And what better way to show off that you've got the stuff than just, you know, 
buy missile parts, reverse engineer them, and be like, yeah, here's how this works. I know exactly how it works. And use that as a resume item. Big brain hours. Okay, so. I don't like that. Screw. I'm going to use a screw that's a little easier to grip. I need a blue Phillips screwdriver. Where did you skid off to? All right, guess we'll use flathead then to drive it back. So, put that there. And if you're looking to get more teardowns like this, subscribe, smash the smash the subscribe button. JDAM the like button. And don't forget to throw money. Because this stuff is not very cheap. Yeah. I'll probably also do a how to uh, overhaul FLIR cores. Yeah, find me an R27. My god, if you find me an R27 or an ATOL. I will be extremely happy. Hell, if you could figure out how to get a museum to let me do a documentation teardown, that'd be even better. Paper. Interesting. Yeah, look, paper. Here, I'll switch over to the microscope view because I have that. Need another piece. Go. Microscope view. A microscope. Yeah, here we go. So if we look down microscope. You see the telltale fibers that make it paper or fabric. Well, you can find obsolete versions because technically AIM 9s are still in active service. That's the trick. You find really obsolete ones or ones that have been end of life and scrapped. The real trick is finding ones that haven't been destroyed. So most of them are horrendously destroyed at the end of their lives. Just because they don't want people like me coming at them, figuring out how they work. Which is understandable, but sad. Because they'd make excellent training tools to learn reversing. This. Alright. We're switching back to workbench. See machined metal. See a flat screwdriver. Blow that thought out. C control logic is most likely in a different module. Take some more documentation pictures. Set focus here. Lock it. Get you brighter. So 
let's move it closer. Lock it. Or crank the exposure up. Now we switch to the other side. Okay. Got documentation about this. Control logic is most likely on a separate board that goes back here. All right, so now we can start looking at removing this piece. I'm gonna go put this back on my oscilloscope probe so I don't lose it, because that would be annoying. Uh, I can't remember if you're trying to do TBC like the rest of the uh, BPS Discord, but control systems are fascinating. Total headache, but fascinating. Especially when you realize like the original Sidewinders, the AIM-9 Alphas, uh, had around 11 vacuum tubes in them, and they did partial differential equations in real time with 11 vacuum tubes. That's in a level of elegance that blows my mind. Side note, if none of if the new people here have never seen Joe Barnard's stuff, you should absolutely go look at it. It is amazing what he's accomplished. And not just by bias saying that as a trenchy. He's he went from a music major and is now the premier lead on beautiful, beautiful full state control thrust vector model rockets that he's gotten really close to landing. All right, we're gonna make some small incisions here and get rid of this shrouding material. The whole trick here is slow and gentle. You don't want to rush it because a lot of this stuff's very delicate. And rushing through almost anything is a bad, bad idea. Sometimes even though it goes slow and gentle, I wish it could go slower. Gently. S uh, sip, set aside just random pennies. Figure out how to save money on like books. Don't stop doing personal projects. Because guess what? Those are gonna what's be really differentiates you and gives you the real skills. Because oftentimes if you only are a books smart engineer, you'll stall. You'll stall and get stuck far, far more than somebody who's got just raw experience from years of doing it as hobby. Arduino RF transceiver. Uh, depends on what you want. You can use uh, NRFs, you can use 
But which, which uh, frequency are you looking for? Data rates, range, antenna styles. What's your power requirements? Because you can use anything to like a 1.1 kilowatt radio if you really wanted to. I could get that endoscope working. So I want to try looking inside this thing. It's like everybody asking, ooh, what's the perfect Arduino? Ugh, there's no real perfect Arduino is the thing. It's highly dependent on what you do and how you approach it. It's like a damn uh, AT Tiny could be the right thing for you, but then someone's like, "Oh, you gotta use a 300 megahertz uh, TNC 4.0." Uh. Hundred, wait, hold on a minute. An RC boat? Uh, just use uh, what are they called? So use a PPM receiver, like a Spectrum receiver, or an NRF. Those are simple, and there's like loads of NRF tutorials for that exact thing. Start simple, work from there. Don't throw yourself completely in the deep end straight out of the gate. Work up in phases. Come on, yeah, there we go. There we go. Remove glue. Put that over there so we can look at it later. Yeah, never throw yourself completely in the deep end out of the gate. You'll drown. It's slow and steady. Slow and steady wins the race. Ironically, slow and steady is better than fast. Slow is, uh, slow is fast and fast is slow. You'll learn this in engineering. Especially when you're doing mission critical. Mission critical changes the calculus for time and everything. Yeah, everything changes when you got human lives or mission success on the line. That's coming from somebody who's sent stuff to orbit. It's kind of a pain. It's cool, yeah, but yeah, throwing yourself in too deep is a thing. One of the things I tell my mentees, kids jumping in far too deep straight out of the gate is a bad, bad idea. Still gotta figure out how to get this front off. Hmm. I'm gonna do some think. I'm not gonna uh, build liquid rocket engine. That's just a bad idea. Hell, I know people who build those professionally and they're like, it's a nightmare.
honestly, a lot of these people going into TDC uh, are in way out of way out of their depth. Way, way out of their depth. They're coming at it. They're trying to throw a uh, 16 megahertz Arduino at it, and they're going to be fighting it the whole way because you need to throw at least floating point in there, especially when you start doing like PID. Doing that without floating point is a nightmare. You can, but you're going to be spending clock cycles like there's no tomorrow. How the hell is this thing holding? No, that's bending. Hmm. I'm not going to undo these two screws back here. two back in because looking at them I realize okay that's that one cleaned out that's that one cleaned out as well snap that on These are retaining brackets for standoff, holding this in a very specific location. Okay, stay, stay, stay. Creating a CAD copy, this is going to be interesting. Damn it. Shit. Okay, what we're going to do is take this carefully, hold it in place with this. Snug down. Remove the other one. Dumb trick where you do one thing and the whole thing falls apart. Well, I wouldn't know that because I'm not the one who built this thing and I have no familiarity with these systems aside from just like extensive imagery. So I'm going in this almost blind. It's not like I have an entire Intel staff that's feeding me information about how these things are constructed, who built them, and their exact heritage. Those are rebound back in place. I'm probably also going to just put the rest of the mirror retaining pieces back for good measure because I don't want that mirror coming loose. That's while I figure out the rest of this, like that side over there, how I'm going to remove this. Uh, small flathead. Yes. Go. No, 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 no. Come on. 
puppy in a little shape. Get back on there. Oh, hey, Carl. Well, uh, I've been streaming for like three hours working on this thing, trying to figure out how it works. Uh, Common Center, not really. Sidewinder is the most available because of how prolific it is and how many variants there are. The other problem is, like, a lot of the old ICBMs are horrendously expensive to collect parts out of. Because a lot of them share parts with Manchester guys or Kurt guys it is now. Because back in the day, you used to be able to uh, tape somebody up front of a uh, ICBM in a Friendship 7. And say bye bye, have fun in space. Which I would totally do, side note. Yeet me in space, bros. Hell, some of the stuff I've heard from... I don't have an R9X. If you could figure out how to get me an R9X from the CIA, holla at me. I mean, it's not like I can just go default dance right outside the CIA and say, give me R9X. They'll probably say, no. And more importantly, ask me, how the hell did you get here? To which I don't have an answer. Which they won't like. But yeah, you can just drive by the CIA up here which is hilarious. Okay, you can't drive right by the CIA, but close enough. Pretty much drive by the CIA. The knife part is not overkill. It increases your kill radius without increasing collateral radius. Which is pretty important because even though they're pinpoint, you might need to take out more than a single occupant. But you also might just need to dome the guy in the driver's seat. Which we've seen works pretty well. Sorry for doing this out of camera view, it's just really hard to do underneath there. Yep, it's pure kinetic. If you had explosives, the knives would be kind of ridiculous. But since you have no explosives, the knives make sense. Okay. Mirror retainers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, turbo fans? Nah. They're not really that impressive. Because you can get uh, modern target drone turbo fans that work far better. Ugh. Hmm. Uh, the missile with the concrete warhead. They actually have JDAMs, which are just like concrete bomb tubes, which are the inerts, or they're just like pure uh, slam, no boom.
Hypersonics, uh, they're kind of a mystery right now, mainly because, you know, they're spicy. <laughs> spicy by nature. I think this might be glued in, looking at that, because I see surface roughness there being reflected. Mm, not any cool flower was slightly aside from like the typical F-18s on occasion. Of course, we have the C-130s, but those are common places to hell right now, because they're just everywhere. Same thing with the V-22s. Major V-22s go brrrr. Sometimes they go wappa 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 wappa. Really late at night and keep me up. Dripping some solvent? Mmm, I don't know what kind of glue it is though. I really just want to get rid of this one. I mean, we could just add some... Do I dare acetone it? V-22s don't go crash anymore. That was only the early ones that had mechanical gyros that got overwhelmed. The new ones with the laser ring gyros? Oh no, they perform beautifully. Hmm. Ah, we've only dropped 0.2% of frames, which is great. No, 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 no. You don't need to keep feeding the Marines these days. And we've been going for four hours. I might be calling her tonight soon. I'll probably muse on how to get this thing apart. Yes, the early V-22s did have major problems with their uh, gyros. They had mechanical gyros, which would hit gimbal lock and uh, saturate extremely easily. Which caused them, several of them to flip over, killing everybody. When they switched over in later years to laser ring gyros, that problem stopped. Because laser gy ring gyros are not only much better, but they also don't saturate like that. Which is pretty important. You've got the gyro being the heart of your system. That's keeping you in the air. Alright, put this back together. See ya, Carl. Try not to go too crazy out there. Israel, that doesn't make sense. Carl, don't drink it. Don't do it. Two cans of Monster in the same day. No. I need to figure out how I'm going to remove this. I'll probably brainstorm on that tonight. I might dissolve it, the retaining stuff, in maybe ethanol. I don't know. Anyway, Carl, go to sleep. You probably need it. I know I'm probably going to go to sleep soon. Nah, I'm taking Monday off. But I am done with tearing this down for the day, I think. Put the parts back where they belong, which means not tighten them all the way down, just partially, so they stay in place, but I can easily get back to where I was. So probably be episode one. I'll have other episodes soon. We might re-engineer from the ground up some of these things. Yeah, I've been on hell schedule too, mainly because lately there's been uh, a lot of stuff going wrong with work boards, which means it's a giant headache. And I, as the only EE on my entire team, 
it's on me to fix that because they're also the boards are my baby I've designed them from the ground up which is kind of a pain but it's worth it when everything works when it doesn't work though it gives me nightmares Ooh, F86s are nice I'd be very sad if my uh, local airport was a mill airport and stopped being a mill airport because I love the sound of jet noise. That's just how it be. Jet noise gives me life. It makes me have a better day immediately. I was born under the approach vector of... I was born on an Air Force base, actually, and I was born under the approach vector right where they r rumble all day. Sometimes they even fly. No, no, turbojet. No, turbojet noises aren't that great. The really good stuff, afterburners. Especially when you're like 30 feet from them on deck of a carrier. Never gonna forget that. That sound, ooh, it's so good. It's something special, I tell you. Where the heck is that other screw there? piece is going to go there, and then I'm going to remount this dome ring. Afterburners are part of jet noise, is the thing. It's a critical part of jet noise. Jet noise is incomplete with afterburners. Without afterburners, at least. Not having afterburners is like experiencing only half life gotta enjoy afterburners especially those f-35s in full burner oh boy that's some good stuff ASW aircraft are pretty cool All right, I think with this being reassembled, uh, we're gonna call it a night here. We are just coming up on four and a half hours. I think I might just call it at four and a half hours. I think it's just switching over to uh, general hangout time right now. No, I'm gonna go get my target detector cover. cool sidewinder parts I have are retention rings that hold the segments of the sidewinder together. This one has warhead ring that holds the warhead on and a target detector cover. This one's from VMFA 314. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If your bedtime's not that late, just go to bed early. You said you have uh, your your bed's time's all screwed up. Well, unscrew it up. And then, of course, you've also got the obligatory roller on. One of the coolest pieces of the Sidewinder. The simple elegance of this is absolutely incredible. And the fact that it spins is even better. We Let's try to spin up. Sorry about your ears. I need to uh, degrease the uh, bearings on here because they're kind of full of crappy grease. So what, what this does is it sits on the wingtip, gets spun up by the airflow that's channeled down here, and then, yes, the screws do commonly corrode. So what happens is it spins up and then as the sidewinder tries to uh, twist and roll, this uh, pre precesses with the gyro that stops the roll. So these are anti-roll devices. 
The X-Ray does not have them because it does not uh, do the roll. Instead, it's got full TV jet vane and uh, fin control. So it doesn't need these. I really got to get out to China Lake Museums one of these times and see the beautiful, beautiful exhibit they have there of how the sign runner was born and all of its variants. That roller on probably costs, well, depending on if we're talking one-off or full line production. Full line production, you're probably looking at about 50 bucks. Maybe. Because remember, economies of scale start kicking in means you make a lot more for a lot less that's the name of the game with basically any contract manufacturing make enough that you hit economies of scale and then make bank it's a little more complicated than just that though Yes, if you're looking at what it costs the government, it's different from what it costs the contractor. Because most contracts operate on a cost plus. Which is like the grail of contracting. They're like, oh yes, we've got a cost plus. Basically, how much money can we make off the government, in a nutshell. great progress today on reversing this and then we also uh, hit some stumbling blocks but that's life especially on reversing in the blind and heck it's kind of more fun when you don't have everything go perfectly to plan you learn way way more yes I've uh, seen that guy. I've looked at some of his stuff, and I'm just like, wow, a yowie wowie. That's some uh, pretty expensive stuff, especially that shipping. The shipping is the big oof. Where's my other Phillips bit? Is it? Nope. These are flathead bits in there. This needs to go there. That's going back over there. Did I leave it in the drill? It is not in the drill. This is not a drill. Picture of a hammer. It's one of my favorite memes. It confuses the uh, pretty much anybody who does not grow up ordinarily speaking English. Because I work with a few scientists who were prior Soviets. Oh, wait, where the hell does this go? Oh, it goes here. So they find it very confusing, especially like most of the humor. <laughs> He's parting out the Buran. <laughs> I know what I got. Uh, yes. Yes, you do. God, imagine like instead of having a project car, you've got a project aircraft. Like an old F4. You can buy old F4s that are in non-flyable condition for kind of cheap. I've seen some that have that still have their engines and everything in them for about what was it, 90k, which isn't terrible. I mean, the hard part's going to be getting them back to airworthy with how few parts are left. Remember, without the primary supply contracts, nobody makes the parts. So you've got to either yank them out of museum birds. Or figure out some other way to get them. Oh, here's my last bit. Oh, that's Torx. I kind of want to buy some jet turbines. Just so I can spool them up and keep living up to my brand. Also, just jets are cool AF. Mm, 
No. Buying parts from Davis Montham Air, po Air Force Base is a fair bit harder than you'd think. Mainly because it's still government property. The government doesn't like to sell property. If you're really, really, really lucky, you can find yourself in the right place the right time and pick them up on surplus sales because if the government can't sell it, they surplus it out sometimes. A lot of stuff never sees the surplus and is just destroyed, uh, either being melted down or shredded because they don't like people having nice things. Especially anything newer than 93. Anything newer than 93, good luck, have fun, bye bye, don't come again. 1993 or 96 is the magic cutoff where they're like, go away. You cannot have. Which is annoying. Because there's some stuff that came out slightly after that that is really nice. But on the plus side, Lima's, Gen 1 Lima's at least, uh, came out before that. Yes, the boneyard, of course, is guarded. It's inside the uh, concertina wire. So, no. You will get stopped well before you yoink. Don't try it, dumbass. It's over, Anakin. I have the high ground. Oh, they tear them apart. They tear them apart and then use the parts in other warheads. Because uh, tearing apart warheads is uh, not a pretty business. Anyway... We hit four and a half hours of stream, which is a good, good long stream. I think this is probably one of my highest engagement streams yet. Uh, if you want more of these, subscribe and keep asking for them because if I can get cool stuff to tear down and we and analyze, I'm more than happy to keep doing these. Especially when you could do like actual deep dive into figuring like how this thing works on a fundamental level, which is. Not the easiest thing to find all the time, but it's all of it's floating around out there on the internet. Yes, they either dispose of solid motors by blowing them up or uh, just firing them vertically. We uh, had a recent firing out at, uh, what was it, Wallops Island, where they basically inverted a rocket engine and then just blasted it off like, boosh! It's a fun way to get rid of them. But anyway, that's it for this stream. Thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out. It's a shame we couldn't actually get far enough in this thing. But, hey, it's a first attempt. So that'll be it for this stream. Uh, I'll figure out what I'm going to stream next. Probably some board design, maybe. Maybe doing some other stuff. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But thank you for coming. Thank you for watching me try to figure this out. Thank you for supplying advice, ha uh, heckling, or just random chatter in the background. Uh, as Joe says, may your uh, skies be blue and your winds be low.